Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Welcome back to the last of our mole calculation uh, videos. We've managed to get some human beings in the room while this is happening. Say hello, human beings. Hello. That's you immortalised on YouTube forever. Um... Right guys, I would like to tackle the last of the mole calculations. This is a sort of oddball of relatively simple ones. Uh, this one here, Atom Economy, is probably the simplest of the lot. Uh, we'll have a look at that first. And then there's proportion questions. There's at least two of them on a regular basis nowadays. I may actually be responsible for them. Oops, sorry about that. And there's also something they used to ask about a long time ago. Haven't seen it for uh, a long time, but just in case. It's a density question which you can actually calculate the molar volume of a gas if you know its density. And you know what the SQ are like. They're twisted individuals. No offence to any SQ people who are watching this. Um, so in case they bring that back, let's start with atom economy. Leila is very kindly reinforcing my uh, rapidly fitting memory. Atom economy is the total mass of desired products. Uh, now, you might make more than one product, of course. Uh, that's the way I'd phrase it. Um, so you can ignore the products you don't want uh, and the total mass, don't forget of course if there's a mole fraction multiplier if it's 3 moles of a product you'll get 3 times the GFM divided by the total mass of all the reactants so uh, that is how you calculate what's called the atom economy what on earth is the point of the atom economy calculation? It's used in industry if you've got more than one way of making a given chemical. You always choose the one that, well, I say always, you would normally choose the one that's got the best atom economy because you're making maximum profit, and profit is everything in private industry, of course. Unless one route managed to make your desired product with a really good atom economy, but also made a horrible byproduct that you would have trouble getting rid of, that you couldn't sell to somebody else. But that's wandering into economics. So let's leave it at that. Let's have a look at an actual example. This will not take as long. Um, can I zoom in? I'm having some problems with camera work these days. Come on, this is what happens when you use a phone instead of a proper camera. Oh, come on, do me a break. Phone, please. Be ah, that's better. Thank you. Then you zoom in too far. My phone hates me. It has zoomed in too far. Better. Okay. Atom economy for the production of iron. That is all you want then, folks. So that goes in the bin. We have four irons. So the top line is going to be 4 times 55.8. And I said the bottom line was the total mass of all the reactants. So therefore we need two lots of 159.6 plus uh, three lots of 12, which is 36. Let me just get that for you. Oh, by the way, sorry, it's times 100, isn't it, silly old fool? Forgot to say that in the first one. Okay, despite my apparent incompetence of being able to use a calculator, I, I talked about that in the previous ones, I do have sausage fingers, which is why I like proportion rather than moles. Um, the answer comes out to be 62.8% atom economy, which, of course, is B. Please remember these multipliers there. It would be so easy to get caught up in your memory trying to remember what on earth is atom economy. It's actually in your data book on the formulas page. I've just realised that's off shot. What an idiot. There we go. Please remember these uh, multipliers. Um, don't include the three carbon dioxides, of course, because they only want the iron. That's why we've chucked that out. I did say desire product Z, or in this case, there's only one desired product. And I think that's what's done for atom economy. That's uh, so easy, we're not going to talk about it. Let's have a look at... a. Uh, this one here now these are proportion calculations now this is where if you're okay with my proportion system you're laughing uh, hysterically in the background because there is no easy way to do this via moles you can't do it via moles what they often do is they throw in this unit here they love throwing in milligrams now please remember that if you've got x milligrams and you want to convert it into grams you actually divide by a thousand, which is slightly counterintuitive, but the same would apply from grams to kilograms. Um, so if you had 72 milligrams, that would be the equivalent of 0 0.072 grams. So just watch that conversion, guys. I think that's probably why they put it in so much. There'll be two types of data, which means you can make your two columns, and you want um, three numbers and then an unknown. Basically, that's the way we're doing these. Very often you have to do that twice, and that's what generates your two marks. Let's have a look. Here. Minimum concentration of ethane thiol in air that can be detected by humans is 2.7 to the negative 7 milligrams of ethane thiol per centimetres cubed of air. That's not much. Probably stinks then. 
Calculate the minimum mass of ethane thiol that needs to be present in a room containing 43,900 litres of air in order for it to be detected. Now again, check, look at that, look. That's litres, that's centimetres cubed. That's where you're working for your marks in this one. It's not a difficult calculation, but don't get tied up in the units. So personally, I like to make sure that everything's in the same unit to avoid powers of a thousand out. It would be a shame to throw your marks away. Okay, the way I would do it first, I think, is I would probably figure out, um, we know that if you have one centimetre cubed, you need 2.7 to the negative 7 to be detected. This is actually much easier than usual. This is all based around units, this one. I think I might find a different one that's not based around units. Anyway, let's move on. 43,900 litres is equivalent to, we multiply that by 1,000, We'll turn it from litres into centimetres cubed. Blimey. That'll be 43,900,000 then. So that's that number of centimetres cubed. And for every... Uh, you can Humans can detect that for every one there is of that. So in fact, uh, all we need to do in this is multiply that by the detection limit. 2.8. Seven. Oh, I see why the second... Oh, can you spot why the second mark is? I'm thinking, this is too easy. Have a look through this question. This is a calculation question in chemistry that is extremely unusual. 99% of the time, it's... <laughs> I'll leave you to see if you can figure it out. Anyway, I'll do the sums. Come back to you in a second. Lovely, says my glamorous ass assistant, Duncan. Um, but the question is, what's here? And I always say, have a look back at the question and see if they've specified the unit. And if they haven't specified the unit, you need to put it in. And if they do, you don't. Just for a change, look at that. Minimum mass, that is all. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what on earth is this? Well, 2.7 to the negative 7 milligrams per centimetres cubed. So that is actually milligrams. That's in centimetres cubed. So this, that, technically speaking, that's actually per centimetre cubed. And if you know your maths, come back next year and we'll have a look at this. It's like algebra with units. These two disappear and you're left with milligrams. That gets you your second mark in this particular one. Unusual though. It is unusual, this one. Let's zoom back out. Uh, sorry about that jumpy camera. Oh, come on, phone. No, that's in. Be nice. That's better. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about was this oddball here. You can probably skip this bit of the video, and if you do watch it and still don't understand it, you know what? Don't waste your life on it. But just in case they ever hit you with a question like this, they will say the density of nitrogen gas is 0 0.00125 grams per centimetre cubed. And then they'll say, calculate the molar volume. Now, that seems to be undoable at first glance because you only have one number. However, if you realise to yourself that that's actually grams per centimetre cubed, so we've got grams, which is a mass, and we've got volume. So, that is telling us that uh, every one centimetre cubed weighs 0 0.00125 grams. Now, we want a molar volume, which means we're going to have to put an X in the volume column here. And all we need is the corresponding third number in here. I wonder what on earth goes in here. Well, if you cast your minds back to the definition of molar volume, I said it was the amount of space taken up by one mole, which means... This has got to be the mass of one mole, i.e. the GFM. And of course, I've used a Hofbrinkel because I'm a terrible, hideous human being. So you would go and look up 14 and you'd be wrong, of course. It's 28. So if we substitute that into there, do the cross multiplication. Very quick reminder of that. It's been at least five seconds since I've talked about cross multiplication. That times that equals that times that. And you solve for x. So x will equal 1 times 28 divided by 0 0.0125. Let's do that.
classic error. It does help when you keep an eye on your zeros. What a daft old fool, honestly. Just unsubscribe from my channel and go and find a better chemistry tutor. Gives us... Gives us an answer, apparently, way too big. It gives us 22,400. Oops, have we gone wrong somewhere? Not really, because that's centimetres cubed. So, so is this, which of course is 22.4 litres per mole, which is pretty much bang on a nice sensible value for, mo for our molar volumes. And that, you'll be very glad to know, is the last of the calculation videos, folks. If this has been of any use to you whatsoever, you might consider subscribing. Although, as I've said before, I'm not sure why I say that. Just because it says it at the end of every other video. Thanks for listening, folks. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.